HOK Infosys provides world class online IT training, staffing, and software testing solutions to customers worldwide. HOK Infosys supports 100% job oriented training, hands on project work, cloud test lab, resume preparation and review, mock interviews, robust syllabus, one time pay, lifetime access to live classes and videos. H2K Infosys has won the trust of thousands of students worldwide. For free demo class, visit h2kinfosys.com. Okay, you can directly write that HTML1, but um, it's, it's always recommended to have HTML and body. Okay, whatever we wrote, we can actually do. Okay, there is one object which is missing here. You can actually use it that whatever you are done with the response, if you are done writing, you can ask a response to flush it out. Okay, response dot flush buffer. This is optional. Okay, you may or may not use it. So you can see that in example, it's not used, but you can also use it and send this particular thing to a browser page. Okay, so we'll see both the examples without it and with it. There is no difference actually. I am redeploying with the help of clean option. So I have multiple options here. Let me show you that options. If I right click it, I have one option which is publish. Publish means whatever uh, var file getting created from this web project that I will show. Okay. Uh, whatever web project you are deploying will be again redeployed with the help of publish. Okay. Only changes will be redeployed. Clean means previous files will be deleted and new files will be recreated. Okay, you have debug and start as usual. You can start in a debug mode or you can start in a normal mode. Okay, so I'm just starting in a normal mode and see what happens. We'll also see where this war file goes and how it is getting deployed in Tomcat. Okay. Now let's hit first now and see what happens. Okay, welcome students. So this is printed on the screen. So whatever you are sending with the help of response object, you can do that and you have a lot of methods and we're going to learn these methods in detail. Meanwhile, also one of the things you need to understand what exactly deployment Tomcat does. So let me go into Tomcat. Okay, so this is a bin folder where all startup and all files will be there. Okay, leave folder all the jar files which Tomcat uses. Okay, we're gonna learn about more more about these jar files when we also learn about JNDI. So these are the jar files which are required for Tomcat to initialize the objects which you are using. Okay, it has all Catena related or other stuff also like MySQL and all. Now your jar files get deployed here. Okay, so you can see that march web project dot var var file I'm sorry not jar file var file var is web archive just like zip okay web. these are other projects which we are working on like test struts this is last batch struts application or probes similarly last batch application okay so march web project this is what is deployed okay with the help of our deployment we actually use it run on server that run on server we deploy march web project here okay this is something tomcat uh, uninstall or oh, sorry unzip it and use it for uh, running the java classes see here it's a class for solid dot class not java okay cool we need to know where it goes that's why we are seeing that web.xml entries what you get from http request okay now one example of http request also we should see so how to pass the parameter to the request okay first thing is how to get the parameter from the request okay so we have this request object okay just get parameter simple get parameter and give parameter name that parameter name let's say I'm passing name 
okay and i am getting a parameter string name equals to request dot get parameter name okay and now i am just this out input name is name and you can also say you can say this welcome name okay so you can do this dynamically you can write the name of the student how do you pass this particular name how do you pass this so you do that with the help of URL in URL you will say that question mark name equals to Rishi okay this is what you will do while passing the parameter okay so you pass with the help of URL. So this is also called as URL parameter. And this is only possible with HTTP GET method. Okay, it will not be possible with HTTP POST method. So if you are writing for DO POST, it will not expect the parameter here. Only HTTP GET method. We have more details on this. But only HTTP uh, GET method will allow you to pass parameters like this. Okay, let me start the server. started let me pass the parameter rishi okay welcome rishi input name is rishi this is how you actually pass the parameter to the servlet this is so simple right so passing the parameter to the servlet you can just append it to the url and send it to the servlet okay if you are using http post method there is a different way of doing that we're going to learn that particular method in the next class okay so you can see the first servlet which is taking the HTTP request parameter. How do you get the parameter with the help of request.get parameter method? Pass the parameter name. It should exactly match what you are doing here. If there is a discrepancy, then you will get null out of it. Okay. And then you got the name and you can also send it back to the response. Got that? Questions on this? We have a lot of methods on requests and responses. We're going to learn all of these methods. You want to learn restrictions, you want to learn detailed manner, all, all these things in detail, okay? So now we have different things in the request and response. So I will not continue this because this is a huge topic. I have to discuss each and every method in detail. Like if I'm saying that there is a header names, then I have to take the header names example. Okay, correct parameter name, then parameter name in example. So one thing only I will take it today because we have few minutes left is uh, initialization parameter that is init param. So init param is something which is you can pass to the servlet in advance. Okay, you do not need any URL or something. Let's say you are passing a database name or database username password. Okay, or anything which is uh, servlet should know in advance before serving the request that is called initialization parameters or init parameters okay yes you need to install target okay so that is called initialization parameter so this initialization parameter are actually something which you can configure in web.xml let me stop this server okay now let's uh, have an example that I need uh, to pass a parameter called DB name. Okay, so private string DB name. Okay, so the database name is coming from something else, some other configuration file. That configuration file is web.xml. Okay, so I do not use URL here, I am using uh, web.xml to pass the initialization parameter. You can pass initialization parameter in a servlet mapping with the help of init param okay so init param has two 
things parameter name and parameter value so parameter name is db name okay and parameter value is sybase so i'm using sybase database for this particular application so this is what i'm saying but how do you access this particular init parameter you can do that with the help of one object called as surlet config surlet config okay and i'm saying config equals to get so this is it surlet config configuration of a surlet okay all the configurations related things about this surlet surlet config object we're going to learn about this uh, but this is what the solid config object is solid config is configuration of a solid inside tomcat okay so we can get this initialization parameter with the help of this particular config object okay and let's see what exactly this config object gives us get init parameter okay and then pass the name db name string actually you already have a variable db name equals to config dot get init parameter okay and you can definitely utter dot write I am using DB name I am using service this is what it's saying okay so config servlet config is a configuration object of a servlet this object is given by Tomcat okay this object is actually responsible to give all the configuration related thing about this servlet and this is provided by Tomcat okay we don't uh, create it we don't initialize it this is already given you can see that I have directly used get servlet config object here okay so let me run this and this is for getting initialization parameters initialization parameters are something which you can pass from Tomcat to your application everyday lectures are getting uploaded okay so definitely I'm going to upload that as soon as possible yes we had three sessions of JDBC how to install Tomcat that's what we learned yesterday you can please uh, visit the yesterday's video it has detailed instructions about that the uh, Tomcat is not an installer Eclipse is not an installer Java is not an installer it's just a zip file you download and unzip it and done you can you can actually uh, check the yesterday's video we have discussed the same stuff okay I'm starting the server and server now links of if you subscribe to particular email like I send okay if took Infosys sends you a link okay that link you need to subscribe it okay automatically you will get daily links okay and also once the link is created you can click on it daily if you have a single link you can click on it daily till month ends okay there is no new link created for entire month the month the link is constant for entire month believe me okay 
So what did I do? I need parameter. Parameter is DB name. Inside the servlet tag, started it. Publish it. I am using Sybase. Where are it getting from? It's getting from web.xml. With the help of init parameter db name. Okay. No, no, it's to get him immediately sends it. Everybody gets it and you don't. That's a difference. So you have to call it to get him. This is not something shared by me. Please call them. There must be some discrepancy in your email ID or something. I don't share the link. I actually only share uh, that when there is a class or when there is not a class. Okay, only this thing is in my control. Link is completely created by Ashtogatim. Please, please contact them. Okay, so this is how you can actually receive the init parameters. Now, now next class means tomorrow's class. What we're gonna learn is what are the different things in request, what are the different things in response, how to use them, why to use them, when to use them. This is important, okay? Like send errors, send redirects, send content types. So those things we're gonna learn in tomorrow. In material, okay, the materials are already uploaded. In material, you have a few examples. If you want, you can always go through it and see what all these examples are. And if you are well in advance, by uh, reading it in advance, if you are uh, reading it uh, prior to my class, go ahead and try these examples on your Eclipse also, okay? Please do that. Cool with it? So let's stop today and let's continue in tomorrow's class with more detailed discussion on request response and we'll also try to start something which is called as HTTP session. Session is also one of the important objects. It's not directly visible. We can create it and we can use it. Okay. So let's stop today and let's continue tomorrow. Thanks a lot everyone. Have a wonderful night. Yes, video will be uploaded of course. Okay. So thank you everyone.